I was asked recently how to create a wavy wood ceiling similar to these images. I would use a sandbox tool. Now, this tool is designed for contours on a site map, but will work just as well for this project. We're going to assume we're going to make a ceiling that's 8 foot by 8 foot. I'm going to go ahead and activate the sandbox tool. And I can either go to draw sandbox from scratch, or I can use the toolbar. And to see that, you can go to view toolbars and make sure that the sandbox toolbar is checked. So choose either draw sandbox from scratch or click the from scratch button over here. We need to type a grid spacing amount. And this is the density of the grid, which will affect the smoothness of the curves. The default is going to be 10 feet, which is going to be too big for an 8 foot by 8 foot room. So what we'll do is type 4 inches, which will give us a relatively smooth curve. Click a point to start, move your mouse, and type in 8 feet. And then go in the other direction, type in 8 feet. And there's an 8 foot by 8 foot ceiling with a 4 inch grid spacing. This is a group. And I just double click inside the group and I can get inside the group here and start modifying it. What we'll do is we'll use the smooth button here and that'll help us go up and down onto the surface. So if I click on that, the radius, it wants to give us the radius, the larger the radius, the smoother the curvature, the smaller the tighter the curve. We'll start with 24 inches and if I click and go up, it goes up. Uh, I click and go down, it goes down. And you don't want to go too crazy, but it, it's it's a particular design, what your design really wants to be, whether it goes up or down a lot. You can also type in a different radius, let's say 48 for even more smoother curves and arcs, and you can see more of it is, is selected. And you can, I'm just clicking to select and go up or down how, how I need. Um, and then I can just kind of decide what it looks like. So something like that would give us some interesting shapes, I think. And it doesn't have to be too crazy. Again, it, it would depend on your on your design intent. You know, how, how many how many curves do you think you're going to need for your space um, that would make it look interesting? Now that we're done, we can select and click out of this group, and then I'll make a rectangle on the side here. And I want to make sure that this rectangle is basically the the depth of the whole height of this thing at least. So. I'm just going to make a rectangle like this in, in vertical. I'm going to look straight on this, this grid axis. I'll make it vertical. And then I'll just move it in position. And I'll click like you know one of these grid lines. What I'll make sure is I want to make sure that uh, it is you know, deep enough. So you can see here that, that this doesn't quite go down. So I'm just going to click and move this down in the blue axis. So we're good. And again, I, I drew my rectangle in the red axis. So I know it's perpendicular to this. And that's, that's what we like to be. We we'll select this edge here and select the move tool and kind of go back to it so it's so it goes up to the uh, goes up to there. Select this edge, move tool, lock it in the red by hitting the right arrow key, uh, and then I'm gonna move it up a little bit here. Then I will do the move command, tap control for copy. And the next thing I'm going to do is, is look at the height. This is this is kind of deep. I'm not going to have something quite this deep. Now it, that would depend if it's a tall ceiling with a very tall piece here. This looks this looks pretty big for the wave I'm looking for in my mind. So I'm going to I'll just bring this down a little bit. I think the wave's going to be about that height for my particular ceiling, let's say. But that is dependent on the design. So I selected the line and moved in the blue down. Select the, the rectangle, move, tap the control key. And decide on the spacing. Um, I think this thing would be maybe six inches apart. So I'm going to have it six. And I'll type in 15x. And that's about right. Um, so these are all six inches apart. Again, it depends on the spacing of your particular project, how you're going to want it to look. Now that they're all here, I'm going to select them. And I, I just kind of looked straight on this view. And I just did this crossing. And I right click intersect faces with model. So basically all these planes now have intersected with this bottom. 
I'm going to go ahead and select the top portion, just this top portion right here. Again, I, I kind of looked at it on the side, select the top portion, and I'm going to right click, make group. I could also make it a component. And then I can select the bottom here, and I can just delete this stuff here. So I can just kind of delete the bottom. Oh, see, I went too far. Yeah, just delete the bottom, make sure you don't go too high. And then if you, you know, if you hide the, the bottom here, hide the, the, the contours, oh, there, there it is. There's your contours that uh, I thought looked pleasant. So this might be all you need for your project. You may not need any thickness at all, but if you do need thickness, you can just double click inside and select each one of these and use push pull. The push pull, let's say um, one inch or something like that. And then just double click the other ones. You know. So once you do that, you got it. And, and you can also then select this and soften these edges if necessary. It just depends on, on, on what you want to do, but you can see you're going to get some, some view here. Another possibility is to double click, right click, weld edges. And then when you push pull the, the one, you're not going to get those little grid lines. Let me back up a little bit to the point where we have the top made into a group and the bottom erased. What I'll do now then is make a rectangle in the other direction. And again, make sure I go down below the, the wavy plane. And make sure I also go to the edges. You want to make sure it covers up that whole the whole edges. So I'm just something like this. I'm gonna select this previous selection and select hide. And then select this one and again do the same thing. Use the move with the copy in the red this time. Six inches, 15x. Select this top portion. Always good to select just the top portion. Intersect faces with model. And then select the top portion and make group. Hide this one as well. I can go ahead and now select this whole thing, delete it. Edit, unhide all. And This is another interesting effect that you can have. And again, you can then do thicknesses just to get, get the look. Another thing you can do now that it's a group is you can use a scale tool, the scale tool, uh, and you know, make it deeper or shallower, you know, or maybe less, less wavy, you know. You can also, because it is a group, you can select it and make a copy make sure the copy is six inches away and if there's a, if there's a strong noticeable break what I like to do too is on this copy back here right click and flip along the uh, component green so basically, you're mirroring, um, mirroring the the slope, and then of course, in, if you've got thicknesses on this already, you know, if you've got thicknesses here, this will be the, the same color. If not, you can just paint these all that same. Uh, you can just paint these faces white, and it'll, it'll match. But you can see that way the curves that go up continue across here. That's two little tricks. You can apply it the other direction too. And then 
you want to you basically want to line up these these flanges so I'm gonna move this one a little bit here and then this one a little bit here should have lined up maybe I slipped when I was doing that and then again I would <clears throat> this one I'll flip along the uh, red so that these these planes line up perfectly Using this technique, along with the scale tool, can really cover a large amount of area without having to make too many different wave patterns and too much trimming and push-pulling. If you will be copying them and mirroring them and making multiple uses of the same shape, you may want to make a component instead of a group. That way, when one segment is edited, they all get edited the same way. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful.